Welcome back, this is video 2, and in the meantime I had you work on these three problems. So we're going to go over the solutions for them, and then I'm going to present some new material. So the first problem, um, we were talking about rectangular grids, and now we're trying to get from 0, 0 to 6, 4. So this is just like what we did before. Um, you can think of it uh, if you write out the sequence using using writes and ups. Um, you'll be writing, and in total, you need to have six writes and four ups. So, uh, for a total length of ten. So to count how many ways you can do that, uh, we do ten, choose four, or ten choose six, which are the same thing. And if you just calculate that by yourself, you get that there are 210 ways. For the second part, we are still going from 0, 0 to 6, 4, but also we're stopping at this point in between 4, 2. So the best way to do this problem is to break it up into two problems. First, we want a path that goes from 0, 0 to 4, 2. So for that, we need to go right 4 and up 2. So that's a sequence of length 6, 6 choose 2. And then we want to go from 4, 2 to 6, 4 which is going right 2 and up 2. So we multiply that by the number of ways to do the second part, which is 4 choose 2, if you think about sequences. And then 6 choose 2 is 15, and 4 choose 2 is 6. So that gives us 90 for the second part. And finally, problem 4 is leading into what we're doing next. So if you have a blue urn and a red urn, and you have 10 identical balls, you want to drop all the balls into one of the urns. Well, notice that in the blue urn, you can have anywhere from 0 to 10 balls. And once you have, um, so it can be anywhere from 0 to 10. And once you've determined the number of balls in the blue urn, it immediately determines the number in the red urn. So, because it can be any number from 0 to 10, the answer for, the, for problem 4 is 11. So that's those three problems. Now we're going to move on to a slightly harder version of this number 4. Okay, so here we have a blue urn, a red urn, and a yellow urn. Oops. And we have 10 balls just as before. So now notice that we can still say that in the blue urn, there's anywhere from 0 to 10 balls. But once we do that, it doesn't fix what happens to the red urn and the yellow urn. So it's a little bit complicated what we should do. But let's just say, let's take an example. So in one example, the blue urn could have 2, the red urn could have 4, and the yellow urn could also have 4. And let's write out another one. So this one could have 5, 2, 3. And um, just to clarify, if it's 5, 2, 3 and 5, 3, 2, those would be two different possibilities because these two urns are different colors. So we can clearly tell if the red urn has more than the yellow or vice versa. And as one final possibility, we could have 0 balls in the blue urn, 6 balls, and 4 balls. So just keep that in mind. So what we're going to do, just like we did in the previous problem, is form a bijection. So remember a bijection is we want to take every possibility in this problem and make up a new problem for which we can match the two. So um, by the way, this is called the balls and urns problem and it's pretty famous. If you look online, they will talk more about how you can, or just talk more about it because it's very famous. So the technique I'm gonna, sh or the technique most people use is called stars and bars. So basically, it's saying that we take every balls and urns problem and turn it into a stars and bars problem. And so I'm gonna show you how to do that. What we're gonna do is, in this case, we're gonna have 10 bars. 
and the 10 bars correspond to the 10 tennis balls that we put in. Oh, sorry, we're going to have 10 stars, which correspond to the 10 tennis balls we put in, and we're going to have 2 bars. And so let me show you how we do that in this case. So first, um, so here, we're going to draw 2 stars, and um, for the sake of time, I'm going to draw X's instead of stars. I'm going to draw a bar, draw 4 stars, draw another bar, and then draw 4 more. So, you can probably see already how this drawing is um, referring to this way of putting tennis balls in. First we have two, so the so the bars basically separate between the different urns. So we have two stars, four in the first, four in the second, and, and four in the last one. Similarly, in this one, the drawing would be five stars, and then we draw a bar, and then we draw two stars, and we draw a bar, and then we draw three stars. Now the last one is a little tricky, so in this case, what it looks like is first we start off with a bar, and there's nothing to the left of the bar because there are no balls in the first urn. Then we draw six stars. Draw another bar and then we draw the remaining four stars. So what I hope you see is that everything, uh, every possibility of putting balls in can be drawn as a drawing of ten stars and two bars. And furthermore, any drawing of 10 stars and 2 bars can be converted back into a way of putting balls into the urns. So what this allows us to do is say that to count the solution to this problem, we can just count the solution to the stars and bars problem. So what is that? Well, we have a sequence of 12 items and 2 of those are bars, so we can just do 12 choose 2 and that gives us 66. So what we've done with this bijection, this matching between the two problems, is we've turned this kind of confusing problem into a very easy problem of just how you write out a sequence and how many different sequences there are. So that's the beauty of bijections. And now um, I'd like you to take a look at the remaining problems in this section. So work on problems 6, 7, and 8 and check those answers with the answers I have below and once you're done come back for the next part.